What's up guys, Pixel Sammy here and in this particular video I'm going to show this particular effect for the post which Andrew Sim gave on his Instagram. And judging by this post, it is a typical parallax effect. So to make this particular effect, all you need is Photoshop and After Effects. You cannot do this feature in any other software like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or any other software because you need 3D to do this particular technique. So first thing which you need is, so first thing which you need is, you need a picture where you can separate the background and the foreground. And as Andrew Sim used, used leaves in his particular footages as autumn leaves to give a more depth to the picture. So I'm using green leaves and this is my final result after all the editing. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so first in Photoshop, this is the image which I'm going to take. It is taken from Unsplash. So first I'm going to take the quick selection tool and make a quick selection around the object, which is the man in this particular picture. Now you can take your own time in making the selection. I'm just doing it in a bit hurry to make you guys understand. Now after you do this, just click on layer via cut. Now you can see that both the layers which you have selected are divided into two separate layers right now. Now if you just hide the above layer, you are going to say this. In your case it will be a little bit invisible. In my case it is black because it is in my settings. But it's totally up to you, it will be invisible, like it will be transparent for your case, but that doesn't matter here. So what you need is, you need the lasso tool, just drag over the selection, like the black edge, in your case it will be transparent, and then right click, click on fill, click on content aware, and click on ok. And then this will take some time, depending on your computer. And then Photoshop will do most of the work, and it will like remove all the selections, and it makes it a completely separate background. Now what you need to do is you know, save this file as PSD and then import it in After Effects. So here we are in After Effects. So first import the PSD file here and then make sure it is composition written layer sizes and editable layer styles are checked and click on OK. And then drag the leaf PNG which is just for creating a little bit of depth into the thing. Now click on composition and click on the height and width as per your wish and click on OK. And then select the composition and then drag the text PSD file which you have just imported and then drag it into the composition. So as you can see originally it will be a little bit larger so you need to just reduce the size here. And maybe reposition it just a little bit. And then when you double click it, you will see all the layers present inside it. Double click on this and then you will see both the layers. One as the person and another as the background. So I am going to just reposition the person just a little bit. As you can see this is the one which was there in Photoshop. It is just plain footages in different two layers. Now what we are going to do is we are going to make this 3D. So click on this box button which is there on this panel and then it will make them 3D. As you can see there is one view written, click on that and click on two views. It can be any way you want. So in my case I am going to choose the horizontal one. So this is the one which was shown in the 3D plane and that is the original footage, the active camera one. And as you can see in the middle there is a line which is actually the picture in the 2d plane so first what you are going to do is you are going to add a camera so right click new camera and then click on ok and then as you can see in this panel you can see already a camera there and as it is a top view it is like in a 3d plane and as the image right now is in 2d so it is just one single line in the middle but if you just change the z position of the image you can see that the line is moving so this is the background and if you just increase or decrease the Z position like this, it will move back in 3D plane and you can see that in the left viewer panel. And then I'm going to just increase the size as it covers the entire frame. That does the job. Now I want to just reposition the Z axis for the person clip as well. So I'm going to make it come front like this. I'm going to just add the green leaves like this to make it a little bit more effect 
I'm going to add Gaussian blur so that it gives a little bit more depth effect because in Andreas Hems clip he also used some fake Gaussian blurred autumn leaves in his case but I'm going to use the green leaves in my case. I'm not color grading this footage because it will take a lot of time. So you need to turn this image as 3D as well. Now once you turn this image as 3D it will go backwards. So just go to transform panel and play with the Z. And then I'm going to just copy this two or three times. I know it is not looking that good because it is not matching with the color of the footage. But it is just for example purpose and you guys should definitely color grade your footages. I'm going to just copy it a lot of times so that I can put it in different areas and different places. And you can use different shapes of leaves as well to make a little bit more natural effect. So now go to the first frame, go to the camera, click on transform, go to the position, change the position to something like this. It's up to you how you change the position. So just set a keyframe to the position and change the position just like this, maybe around like this. So set a keyframe, then go to the ending of the clip change the position to like on the other hand side you can always see on the left hand viewer panel how the camera is moving and then I'm gonna just add a keyframe to the zoom as well so here is the zoom if you just zoom it in you can see the zoom effect so I'm gonna just click on undo set a keyframe at the first frame go to a last frame Increase the zoom just a little bit, just like this. So it will take a lot of time to render. So on top of all this, I'm going to use another technique which MGSMD can use. It is just my own touch to this particular effect. And so I'm going to just add a puppet effect to this particular image, which means I'm going to just move the face, only the face, just a little bit, so that it gives a little bit more natural motion. So click on that pin button which is there on the top hand side and then you need to make three points on the lower part of the person in order to just keep the orientation steady and then make two points on the face and on the chin. So here you have two points. Make sure that when you just apply these pin points the person layer should be selected. So in the perfect effect, you can see mesh, you can see deform and you can see five points which are actually the five points which you have just created in the panel. So if you just click on the arrow for each and every pin point, you can see that a keyframe has already been made. So go to the last frame, just drag these pin points a little bit on the right hand side which will just give it a little bit more stir in the motion of the face as the keyframe is already made in the first frame as I've just showed before. So if you just go to the last frame and change the position of the points which you've just made, then it will create a really subtle effect to the entire face and it will create a really fake and natural movement. So just mark my words, this will take a lot of time to render out and the end file will be a very huge file. Like this is only a 30 second file and the resulted exported file is around 13 GB. It is around 30 GB in size and it is only a 30 second clip. So it will take a lot of time to render out. So after rendering it out, this is the final result.